is the most important series we've ever had as we talk about the authority of the believer. Here in 2019, I want to first of all begin by asking us how many of us are determined to make 2019 the best year we've ever had? So look what happened. I want to give you a scriptural reference to go along with that. If you just write that in your notes, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. It says, I has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those who love him. I love this next translation right here. It says, what God has planned for people who love him, as believers, is more than eyes have seen or ears have heard. It has not even entered into our minds. What God is saying is that he has prepared something for us yes. so glorious, yes. so wonderful, yes. so awesome. Yes. We can't even imagine all the things he has yes. for us. Yes. You ought to just give God just one more hand up and pray for him for that medicine prayer. So we talked already, have been talking continuously about a decree of something binding and something decides. So let's just make our declaration as we do right here. So let's, let's read this together. I declare I am special and extraordinary. I am not average. I have been custom made. I am one of a kind. Of all the things God created, what he is most proud of is me. I am his masterpiece, his most prized possession. I will keep my head held high, knowing I am a child of the most high God, made in his very image. This is my declaration. If you embrace that declaration right now, please give God one more hand clap of praise in Jesus' name. So 2019 being the best year we've ever had. Now this being said, that does not mean we won't have any challenges. That would not mean we won't have any trouble. May does not mean we won't have setbacks. But it says in the midst of the challenges, in the midst of the trouble, in the midst of the set of setbacks, we know we've already overcome in Jesus' name. So let's remind us about what 2019 means again. 20 means great expectancy or sufficiency. Then we've already talked about that 19 means the completion of a task that leads to a new beginning, like a graduation. You finish this and now go into another place. It also means the number of surrender. So we put that all together for 2019, being the best year we've ever had, it means that after we have been surrendering to God and we have great expectancy to progress to a better and a higher level, then once we made this the declaration, God, I'm surrendering every part of my life to you. We have expectancy. We're about to go to a different level. Is any red about to ready to go to a higher and a better and a deeper level in the Lord? So this whole year, really, from biblical numerology, is about us going to a high level. The, goal, the, the, the progression to the high level, however, is based on our insurance of ensuring that we are now surrendering to God and that we are also ensuring that we have great expectancy as well. Here's what I want to offer. Too many of us are expecting too low. Yes. It's time for us to start expecting big yes. and believing big and talking big and declaring big and praying big. Too many of us have been expecting. I know there have been troubles in the past and we've allowed these past troubles to stand in the way of our present prosperity. It's about saying time, God, I thank you right now. Uh, he already said, he said, I has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has entered to our hearts the things that God has already prepared for those of us who love him. It's time to, can't believe, I don't have any believers in here ready to start believing bigger right now. It doesn't matter to start expecting bigger right now. Don't care what the past has been. We can start today expecting bigger. Believing bigger and expecting bigger. So it's also time to start finding joy in our journey. Yes. Everybody has a journey. Amen. And we can't compare journeys one with another. Amen. Some people made it here, had to stop by the gas station. Some folk made it here with a low flat tire. But we made it here, it's about finding joy in the journey. Yes. And too many, and what happens right here? This is what we have to make a decision. Read this with me, please. I will choose to find joy in the journey that God has sent before me. 
Nobody can find joy in our journey for us but us. Amen, somebody. That we are the ones that have to make a decision, a conscious effort to make a choice that regardless of the path I'm on right now, I'm going to find joy in the journey. Anybody ready to really celebrate the joy that you have in the journey right now in the name of Jesus? I'm going to find joy, to be bar, so that I get so blessed is the life that finds joy in the journey. That, 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 that there's no greater blessing that can come than to say, even though this journey, I, I, I may be headed in a path I'm not, it's, I'm going to find joy in the journey of that God has set before us. Here's the point. God has a path already laid out for all of us. We can choose the detour, but if we stay on the path God has for us, which is what this authority is about, then we can find joy in that journey. So, so our theme verse for this entire month comes from the Holman Christian Standard Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Let's read this together. But we have this treasure. What's the treasure? Jesus, the, the, the Holy Spirit. And clay jars. Who's, who are the clay jars? Us. So that it may be clear that this extraordinary power belongs to who? God and does not come from us. We declare the fact that we are extraordinary, not because of who we are, what we have done, and where we have been. We declare ourselves to be extraordinary because we serve an extraordinary God. Does anybody here know that we serve a God that's extraordinary in the name of the Lord every day? So let's, let's just read one of these. We have one the same thing on the slide. Let's read this together. Ordinary, ordinary people become what? Extraordinary. extraordinary. How? Trusting in our extraordinary God. So 2019, I'm telling you, I want to, it's time to start expecting this year to be the best year we have ever had. It is time to start expecting big and believing big and talking big and praying big, consistent with the word of God. So we always just very quickly look where we've come from. So again, we're looking at this word extraordinary and taking a letter out of, this, out of this word every month to really dig deeper. We spend time with the EX, if there's no word begin with X. We spend time with the EX talking about extraordinary in January. And we, when we were teaching from the subject there, from the theme, from ordinary to extraordinary. And we said we're going to decide once and for all to have an extraordinary life. Has anybody made that decision here today? Have you decided once and for all? Have you decided once and for all? Have you decided once and for all you're going to have an extraordinary I'm telling you right now, our extraordinary life is available to us because we trust in an extraordinary God. So our theme, our, our, our confession for that month was, I operate in the spirit, let's read this together. I operate in the spirit of exceptional excellence. And for January, we said what? I have decided once and for all to have an extraordinary life. Then we went on and we talked about extraordinary being the life we were meant to live. We were not made to be average. God did not send his son Jesus to die on the cross and shed his precious blood for us to be average. Come, I say he did not send his son to die on the cross for us to be average. That because we now trust in an extraordinary God, Jesus' blood was shed for us to live an extraordinary life. The life we were designed to live, we were meant to live, we were created to live in Jesus' name. So, my, so at his point, we ought to recognize it ought to be ordinary to live an extraordinary life. We've been living like ordinary folk and having blips on the screen extraordinary every now and then. Now every day ought to be, the norm should be extraordinary living. When we start going back and enjoying life and family, all, even the family you don't want to see is a family union, and start appreciating the little things in life. Uh, it's time to start enjoying life and celebrating life. It's time to start enjoying life and celebrating life. Too many believers are not enjoying life and celebrating life. Jesus said, I came and shed my blood so you could enjoy life and have it to the full and the overflow. Then we spent some, please read this together. I refuse to live an ordinary life when I serve an extraordinary God. So then we spent some time in February to take a look at this team being trouble-free. And I tell, you, that was, I, I tell you, that was a shocker for some. So the idea was, so let's repeat what we said together. I have decided once and for all to be and live a life trouble-free. And what we talked about was we had this theme verse. 
And we talked about, so let's read this from Psalm, from, from John 14, 27, Amplified Classic. This has to be a verse I want to offer, and we're going to talk about staying in the Word a little bit later. But this has to be our offer of verse that we have to commit to memory or have written down somewhere, or as my mama did when we were growing up and the lights were about to get cut off and daddy had left and we behind her in the morning. She went and planted verses all over the all over the house, in the living room, uh, in the living room, and on the bathroom window, on my forehead. So we would never forget what the word of God said. This has to be one of the verses that when things are just going to start challenging, I want to offer that this is a verse that can, among others, they can provide encouragement. Let's read this together. Hey, this is Jesus saying, peace, peace. I leave with you. My, my own peace. peace. I'm not going to give you some peace I don't have. My own peace, peace. I now give and bequeath to you. to you. Keep going. Not, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Do, let, do not let your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Whose responsibility is it to keep our hearts from being troubled? Whose responsibility is to keep our hearts from being afraid? All right, now keep going to the next one. Stop allowing yourself. So what's the word that should be going in front of us? Stop. You. You. You stop. You stop allowing yourself. Keep going to be agitated and disturbed and do not permit yourself to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. We are not doing that in our own strength. It's because we trust in an extraordinary God. And I know God has already worked out things for our good. And we have to trust God to know that in the midst of all that goes on, I am not going to get agitated. I'm not going to get frustrated. I'm not going to be I'm going to stand and believe what the word of God says. It is not that trouble will not come. I just don't have to let trouble trouble me. Yes. At some point, it's time to start troubling our trouble. Yes. Trouble, trouble, yeah, yeah, you can come if you want to, but I, I trust God. Yes. Uh, you can come if you want to, but I'm going to rely on God. Yes. You can show up if you want to, trouble, but I have more peace on the inside than the problems on the outside. I believe right now, and I'm going to stand on the word, even when trouble comes. Trouble-free living does not mean we are immune from trouble. It means that that trouble no longer has to trouble us. Then that's month we spend the entire month Look at this point about revelation. Revelation. God speaks revelation. And let's read this together. I operate in the spirit of exceptional excellence. What we said all last month. Let's repeat this now. I receive God's promise manifestation after my application of his revelation. So this whole idea was, and, and this was a summary of what we talked about last month. We have gotten revelation or insight about the word, the word about God. We, we, we've heard people talk about how good God is. Amen. Amen. We've heard people talk about how wonderful God is. Amen. We've heard people talk about how awesome he is. That is a word about God. Then we spend time talking about we have the word of God, the, the Bible. This is the word of God, the 66 love letters that God has given us. But it's time for us to move from this hearing a word about God and then start, it's time to study the word of God and once we have heard a word about God and then have studied the word of God, we are now positioned to receive a word from God. And what we spent the entire time saying was that the Holy Spirit, that God, right, he says right here, that God speaks. God is always speaking. And our goal is to make sure what I am hearing is this from God or from bad pizza last night. I gotta make sure I'm recognizing it's from God, and the only way I can know if this really is from God is that I now put it through the filter of the Word of God. If I hear something, sense something, believe something, have, have, have an impression in my spirit, if it is inconsistent with the Word of God, it is not a word from God. Yes. If it's inconsistent with the Word of God, it is not a word from God. So let's read this together. We can receive a word from God after we have spent time in the word of God. And so these biblical safeguards, born again, we trust that the God's word is an error, and we demonstrate our love and respect by knowing his word. So look what happens now. So we've already talked about, we've already, so our focus this month has already been on God, certainly. Every, then we talked about Revelation last month, and it's a logical flow to now start talking about authority. The authority that we have as a believer. Authority. So, so read this with me. What, what is Revelation? Simply doing what? Claiming, Claiming 
authority. Yes. What I want to offer, and we've been...